So, welcome back to Grey's part two. And we are going to look at some of the more untraditional grays I've got on my palette. Two are from Beam, two are from Roman Small. And I really like them because, well, most of them do still have PB29 in them, which is more commonly known as ultramarine blue. They start to bring in some other pigments like PR101, which changes how the color looks. Two of the mixes also include PY34, and the one mix that I'm including in this collection that doesn't include PB29 is one that includes PG50, and it's a color that I'm not actually quite sure how it will mix. When I look at the pigments, I'm not actually sure which version of PG50 they're using. There are several. And so for the sake of this experiment, I've pulled the two versions of PG50 I've got in my palette. We're gonna start with the one that I think it is and go from there. So much like with part one, I'm going to label the sheet and then I'm going to come back and swatch all the colors for this single pigment colors at the bottom, I am just going to leave pigment numbers and in the description below, I will link the names and brands in the color that I swatched them out just so it's easier to find but the page doesn't get super busy with a whole bunch of names and brands. I think it would just make the page too crowded. So let's label this page and then we'll get into what is so now that our page is all labeled, let's get into swatching colors. I have let them sit with water on them just as I was swatching. Lots of paints just need some time to activate, especially if they've been in a pan. I'm going to start with the Roman, the Beam Paints Timberwolf. And it is a very dark, it's sort of Payne's Gray. I think she's got it listed on the website as a Payne's Gray. To me, it's not a true Payne's Gray. It's got too much granulation in it, but it is a really pretty gray. I like quite a lot, especially as a full strength. It's this really dark color, but the more you water it down, the more of the granulation you see. Next is the Cloud Gray Ultra Gray Ultra Cloud. <sighs> too many words. If you're over here from Instagram, you will know that I have a traumatic brain injury. And so sometimes words are hard. This one does not spread nearly as much, but is a really pretty like light blue gray color. Um, and depending on the paper, you really see a pink in it. Misty Morning by Roman Small, which is another very much blue-gray. Final color is Shadow Gray. And then for our pure pigments, we have Lapis, which is a PB29. We have Yellow Ochre. We have Caput Mortem as our PR101. Brush. I do have another pigment pulled for PR101. It's another one that I'm not quite sure which version they're using. There's a couple different versions, though PG50 does seem to have the biggest pigment variation, PG50 and PBR7. I think I've got about a dozen PBR7s in my palette because they all look 
very different depending on how the pigment is processed. The green nineteen. Cypress raw umber deep by Lady Small. And this is our PBR7 that we're going to start with. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the color that gets used in all the mixes, because if you were here for part one, you know that some of the mixes we tried with the PBR7 and it needed switching to a different PBR7 to get the right color. I'm going to let all these colors dry down first, and then I'm going to try color matching to them. So now that you're, they're dry, you can really see how pink this gets, but you can also see the granulation in the gray ultra cloud, which is why it's one of my favorite colors. The shadow gray has less granulation to it, which is why I've also pulled a different PB29. I think I need one that has far less granulation to it, whereas I think Timberwolf needs a version that has quite a lot of granulation. I'm gonna start with which the color that I think is going to be the hardest, which isn't what I did in part one. <laughs> but based on how part one went, I think I want to start hard and get progressively easier, or what I think is going to be easier. So I'm going to start with Misty Morning because I honestly have no idea. Normally I have some sort of plan, and in this case my plan is you know, just sort of figured out. So this is cobalt teal blue, and it might be cobalt green that I need. I'm not actually sure. Let's start with this though. Missing that really like rich mass tone. So we are gonna try over here with cobalt green, but I think cobalt green might just be too green. Yeah. Try adding a little bit more green to it, but I don't think that's pretty gray, but it's not what I'm aiming for. Whereas the cobalt blue, the cobalt teal is more what I'm aiming for, so let's try more cobalt teal and a little bit more of that purple. It's too purple and mast. When you wash it out, it's sort of there. They're never going to be identical because they weren't mulled together and so the pigments naturally want to separate more. Um, but you do still get pretty colors. It's not perfect. We might come back to it. Let's go here. To the Hiromi Small Shadow Grey. Actually, no, let's go up to Timberwolf, because if I go here, then I'm going to be running the hand through it every time. Um, so, PB29. PB43. It's a pretty common mix. Mass tone-wise, you're almost never going to be as dark but I might be able to get that section close-ish let's try a touch more oh, way too much yellow touch yellow
change the color. Hardest to color match. Whereas if you watch the Potter's Pink video, color matching a Potter's Pink is might be easier. Feels like I need something pinker than PR 101. Lovely purple. Apparently, I chose wrong with which one would be hardest. Which is sometimes what happens. It's a different color that's also PR one. Might be the wrong blue. Alright. This blue is sat for long enough. Let's make sure that we swatch these in the right places. That's blue. That's a PR one So you can see it's much lighter and much more orange than that PR 101. This granulates a lot more than that it does. Green. Maybe that was right. Oh, the joys of color mixing. Oh. Oh, 
think though, I was probably closest to my cat. Just a touch of my dark. I think it must be an ultramarine blue dark that they're using. Very dark one of them. Let's try and do this shot of gray before I go back to this. I want to get it. I know. I know this one's going to be the hardest, and it has separated out to teal and to pink, but I think that's always going to happen because it wasn't mauled together. So. Ultramarine blue. Cypress raw umber deep. Win red. Probably way too much win red. Because we are purple. We are very purple. We are too blue now. I do like that this mix includes Cypress Raw and Deep. It's one of my favorite colors. Just a titch of blue. So close. I'm worried about taking it too far. That's pretty much there. All right. Leave it in the pan. You can see how separated this got. Let's do a dot of it. What does that look like? separate with how dark it is I feel like it's missing something um, it's not in the I think with that little addition, it is significantly closer than it's been. It's like still very light. Might try to do more. So I'll just like add in random pigments to try and get closer. So I've just added in. PB60, which is Indian Brown Blue, which is not in the pigment list for Misty Morning, but I think when this dries down, it'll be closer. So, my ultra. I double check the pigment numbers listed on the pan. Okay. 
this is ultramarine blue light. This is the lightest ultramarine blue I have in my collection. It's by Roman Small. Um, it's pretty blue. It is very light. If anything is going to give me this color that I need, it is going to be this. I'm going to go with a dab of yellow. Just a dab. We're going to try the Windsor Noonan Mortem first. Again, a dab. Did I just have the wrong ultramarine blue? Touch more yellow. Now we're gonna tone it down with red. It is a really fun, I'd say if you want practice color mixing, trying to color match colors you use in your palette, like granulating mixtures you really like, is one of my favorite ways to practice mixing because you know what the aim is. You can swatch out the color you're aiming for and it is a great way to work on mixing without sort of being arbitrary because you're working towards a color you already use. As a rule of thumb with a brain injury, I don't enjoy color mixing for pieces. Uh, I find it really hard to recreate a mix I like or create a mix in the moment for what I need. But I really enjoy doing exercises like this where I'm working towards a mixture where, that I already use daily or on a regular basis because it trains my brain to look at colors that I use in a different way and in this case I realized that I was never going to get this dark tone with the colors that I had and so I've tried my own thing and as it dries we'll see if it works it may or may not uh, this one that I thought was going to be not as hard as Misty Morning has turned out to be very difficult. <laughs> um, it's just, it's so pink on top of the pan that I'm really stumped. Okay. We're going to try this about one clean section left before we go back to using the middle section. So we're going to try ultramarine light. Yellow. And English red. Maybe it's too pink. At this point, I'm just adding little touches of blue until I feel like I've toned blue enough. 
something. No, it's dry. I'm going to label these last few colors. And then we'll look at everything once everything's dry. So now that everything's dry, I'd say that the Misty Morning with the addition of PB60 definitely gave me that darker tone that the color was missing in my own mixes. So I am going to go back and double check their pigment list, but I believe it only had two colors listed. It's what I've got listed in both of my spreadsheets for the color. So that's interesting. I also think my first mixture for Timberwolf was probably the closest. Uh, these two are just too green in undertone, and so is this one. Whereas this first one, where it is lighter, it's sort of more in the right direction. I think matching with the pigments that are listed, the shadow gray was the closest, which I'm not surprised by. Um, it makes sense. It's a blue, a brown, and a purple which is actually, in this case, a bright pink, even though it's listed as being a purple pigment. Um, at some point, I'll do a video breaking down what pigment numbers actually mean. And then for the Grey Cloud Ultra, now that everything's dry, I think this mixture is probably the closest in undertones to this. It's still not perfect. It's still not what I would use day to day. Like if I wanted gray ultra cloud, I'd just use the paint. I wouldn't try to mix my own, but it is interesting to look at all the different variations that I found trying to create this. So I'm gonna have to go back and figure out which blue this used. I think it might have been the Viola Lee Blue, which is this one down here, um, but it may have also been Lapis, so that'll be interesting to figure out. I will say that in Mass Tone, the DIY Shadow Grey granulates significantly more than the Roman Small version. I think if I used French Ultramarine by Daniel Smith, it wouldn't, but you also don't know for sure because of the other... No, it shouldn't, because neither of these two really granulate. So yeah, if you used a PB29 that didn't granulate, theoretically, there shouldn't be all the blue separation in the mass tone. So, yeah. As color mixing experiments go, I would say color mixing granulating colors to colors you already have is great practice because it definitely makes your brain work in a different way. It's one of my favorite exercises because A, if you've got the pure pigment colors, it's a great way to play around with the pure pigment colors. I know personally when I paint, I more often grab the mixes just because they make it so much easier. But when I'm sitting down to do something like this and I'm actually playing with the pure pigment colors, I have to genuinely think about what I'm grabbing, which version I'm grabbing. In this case, I used three different ultramarine blues and ended up having to grab a blue that wasn't even listed to try and get something close. 
and if you watch part one, you'll see that there was a PBR7 where it really, really didn't work, and as soon as I switched the PBR7 to a different version, the mix has worked. And so it's also great practice for just learning how your different pure pigment colors mix together, because even if they're the same pigment number, you can get wildly different results. So I hope you enjoyed watching me struggle to mix grays again. Um, if you haven't seen part one, I will link it above. If you haven't seen the Potter's Pink video, I will link it above because both were fantastically fun to make. And I hope you stick around for more content.